Thanks for tuning in to Dirt Bike Channel. I'm your host, Kyle Brotherson. I've got Tyler Thuison with me here, and we are gonna be talking the Honda CR250R. Stick around. Tyler, Tyler, why are your boots making a puddle on this sandstone rock? Because Sam got stuck in a swamp. On, on over here, this is why. And I got stuck. Why are you why are you muddy up to your like crotch area? Listen, we saw a dingo. <laughs> <laughs> that dingo, his name was uh... So Tyler, we did a bunch of riding today. And uh, the first part of the day, we rode some KTM two strokes and some Husky two strokes, a bunch of different ones. And then the second half of the day, we took out the KTMs and we also took the Honda, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, sp I really want to get your insight because you took the Honda before we'd really done anything to it and you took it to a motocross track, right? So it was completely, well, I shouldn't say stock, but it was in its most stock form that we've ridden it. Yeah, right after. And, we, and you took it to the motocross track and uh, you'd been riding motocross the whole season, or, you know. Tell me what you thought. How did well, it go on the track? Well, my perspective is from a beginner because when I took it out, I ridden a motocross track maybe six times yeah. so beginning motocross rider yeah i mean i've ridden dirt bikes my whole life but just barely started riding the track and i'd been riding my 250 xcf mm -hmm. uh, my ktm and it did okay there but you know it's not made for that the 250 xcf yeah was, the um, suspension was a little soft suspension was a little soft and the gearing wasn't you know made for motocross so I was excited to try a real motocross bike, which the CR250 is, mm -hmm. on the motocross track. And I, I did like it. Um, I like the suspension, I like the gearing, and I like the power. I mean, I would come out of a corner and, you know, rip on the throttle and be able to clear a jump, where on the 250 XCF I had to work a little bit harder. Yeah. Um, so, so that gearing for that motocross gearing and suspension, you know, it was good. It was really good. good. I would still, now with that said, I would still, I still felt more comfortable on my KTM, you know, on the yeah. motocross track. But then you, but then you took the bike immediately after that and you took it to some of your, te you have, where you live, you have some technical stuff yeah. that you ride and you really, really love the technical stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, you shared some interesting insights with me. I'd love to have you share that with the viewers. Was it good? Was it bad? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What'd you think? Yeah. So this is before we'd done any gearing changes or suspension it, changes or flywheel weights or any of that other stuff. It, exactly. And on the motocross track, you know, it, it felt older and it felt heavier and, and a few things were, were different, but I didn't have any major problems with it. It's when I took it up into the kind of gnarly technical single track that I found that that bike isn't made for, for that. <laughs> uh, I thought that I would jump on it and it might be a little harder, you know, but I wasn't prepared for what I ran into with that. <laughs> the gearing is not made for anything you know, slow and technical at it all. Was, it was too high. The power high. isn't made for that. The suspension isn't made for that kind of riding. Um, if it was, you know, faster, flowy, mountain, single track stuff, it was okay. Um, but when you got into slow stuff where you had to, um, y you know, work the clutch or, you know, throttle, it was really hard because that power comes on like a light switch. Yeah, you mentioned to me that it was one of the hardest, yeah. if not maybe the hardest bike that you'd ever tried to ride in the, in the single track, yeah. in the gnarly single track, right? Yep, and I've ridden 450s and 350s and 254 strokes, and for me, those are harder than the two strokes we ride now, um, but even over all of those, that it Honda was, was the hardest bike. And I actually stopped at one point because got into some gnarly stuff and I was just working the clutch so hard to try and get, you know, through it, through it that I didn't want to, you know, burn it up. So yeah. I kind of stopped. And, and the, the problem with it is, is the power is so different than, than our, our two strokes. The newer, more linear the, power band. It's more linear. I mean, that, that just lights up the rear tire when you do get in, into the meat of the power yeah. and you lose traction. It just spins the wheel and, 
well, well, you're done. I, I agree with you. What would happen is there's no power in the bottom end and hardly anything in the in the first part of the mid range, and then the power all comes at once yeah. and then it lights up the rear wheel. Yeah. So it 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 does it goes from no bottom end to you know lighting up the rear wheel from zero to sixty and trying to you know ride a bike like that through technical terrain is very hard. Very hard. See the nice thing about our two strokes is you have kind of that grace period before you get into the meat of the power where there is low end grunt and it's tracked and it and it lugs you know and it's perfect for the the technical terrain that we were riding. Yeah. So then fast forward to, to, to today riding uh, changes. Well, you had changed some pushes, positions with the bars. Uh, thank you for that. But then we did a gearing change. We geared it down. We put a 12 ounce flywheel weight on it. And then we had the suspension completely re revalved front and rear for more of a desert single track. I didn't go all the way into like woods tight mountain stuff because I know the bike was never going to really be that good. But, but um, we did those three changes. So you rode it today. Tell me what your thoughts were today in the desert terrain that we rode it it was an improvement everything that was done suspension to the gearing to the flywheel weight all helped it um the suspension i noticed the most yeah uh, and again on the on the motocross track the suspension i didn't really have a problem with it it was it was pretty good yeah. um when i got into the woods i noticed it you know and today i i actually liked it i thought it was great it worked great for the type of terrain we rode um, I did notice that the flywheel weight and the gearing helped with the lugability of it. Um, it still, the power came on really hard and fast and yeah. it made it hard, For but I actually, after Sam broke the clutch lever, had to ride the bike and I couldn't really use a clutch because you, you <laughs> rode it. It was, it was almost impossible. It, it was a shorty. It was a shorty. There was, yeah. And it was almost impossible to pull with one finger. Yeah. So you had to kind of get two fingers up on it and pull it back. It yeah. was, Sam broke a lever here and he also broke a lever like five years ago. So this is, this is his place. It's his shrine. He comes here every five years. He breaks levers. This is the second time I've had to do this because I had the record button. You know, just trying to lug the bike through things and not use the clutch. And it, and it did a lot better. I mean, night and, night and day from what it was before. Now, with all that said, um, all, all those things were improvements. Was it still a hard bike to ride in certain types of terrain? Yeah. Was it, you know, far in superior to what we Inferior, have as, yeah. yeah, have as with our modern KTMs? Yeah. Yeah, here's a question that I have for you, and I'll flash up on the screen if, when I figure out exactly how much money we have into this bike, but it is a lot. Let me just tell you that that bike now is just as expensive, if not a little bit more, could even be about $1,000 more expensive than your 2019 KTM 250 XC because of everything that we've had to do with it, suspension, all these different things. And again, and granted, some of the things we didn't have to do, tell me, would you, would you ever want to, did this make you want to book, buy an old bike and then start fixing it up? No. It didn't? It didn't. Why not? Actually the opposite. Because I saw how much time and effort, not only money, but time and effort that you had to put into this. And for me, I would rather ride than do that. Yeah. Um, now there's people that like to do that and have those skills and abilities and it's more of like a hobby or yeah. a thing they like to tinker on. And that's awesome, you know, do it. If you can get a bike cheap and fix it up and, and enjoy it, then, then great. Yeah. Me, I would rather just spend my time not working on things and go riding. And that's why I... Because you do a lot of maintenance anyway on the bikes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because after every ride, there's maintenance that you do. Sometimes you'll break apart or whatever, but, yeah. but you don't have to spend the initial huge chunk of time at the beginning building everything up. It's just kind of... And then when you do buy used bikes, it's kind of a gamble. You know, you could have bought this and had to do a lot more than you did. I mean, you had to do a lot as it was, but you know, you can buy them and yeah. be into it even even more. Yeah, so. and then the, the nostalgia of the bike is really cool. It's kind of a, it's more of a one of a kind bike right yeah. now. It sounds really cool. It looks really cool, all these things. But at the end of the day, we've done nearly everything we can do minus a hydraulic clutch to the bike and it still doesn't have electric start. It still vibrates you kind of to pieces and uh, yeah, that, that's one thing. And, and, and we could get more use of the bike. I still feel like there's a heavy weight on the front wheel, kind of holding everything down. But I feel like on the Honda, I'm I ride deep in the trail, whereas on on the newer bikes, I feel like I'm riding light on the trail. Yeah. So, anyway, it's it's it, been a fun project, though. I will say, if if you're a person that rides the track a lot 
and doesn't ride a lot of technical terrain, it wouldn't be a terrible bike if, you know, you had a limited budget and, you know, you didn't have, you might. Yeah, you wouldn't have done all the same yeah, things that we did. You, you could have gotten by by doing a, a lot less. And doing it slowly over it, time, cause, maybe. Cause, yeah, I mean, it was pretty, you know, darn good at the track and in the faster flowy stuff, it's not bad. Yeah. It's when you ride more the train I like to ride and, you yeah. know, we ride that, you know, it has its limitations. Down, its limitations. limitations, yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thanks you. Thank you so much for your input, and uh, hopefully we get some more riding tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah.